what title was God said it, it settled it all for me. So in other words, he just said it, it's done, I claim it. That's it, it's settled. So I like the words in that song a lot. Thanks for sharing for sharing that. Today's message, move the hardship. What is the last one talking about today? What's that? Yes, we are. I'll just have to get you to or get set to somebody or maybe else. So, good morning. We did have our informal prayer. We're going to have another prayer, too, at the end. We all, one mind, one call. Good to see everybody. Good to see our guests, too. Thank you. Move the hardship. So, we're going to read from two chapters in Mark. Mark chapter 6 and also Mark chapter 8. What's that? What's those two chapters? We're going to have the verses up. You can not pull in the Bible that's in front of you if you would like to. The, ver the verse will be up. Hardships often prepare ordinary people for an extraordinary destiny. So keep that in mind. It's going to be a focal point. It's going to be a focal point. Keep that in mind. My clicker working? Yes, it is. All right, so now you have everybody to think. I had us do an informal prayer, but now we're going to think this a little bit. You don't have to come up saying this stuff. We just going to think about it. So think for a minute, when was the last time any of you faced, or any of us faced a hardship? It could be current, it could be past. So, that's a hardship. Anything that you felt like, okay, I was not prepared to take on this situation. Some challenge, something that you felt like you lost control, you were hurting, you were mad, you were upset, something go your way. Like you're on a path and you're like, oh, I'm good. This is a nice, Cruise control, roll. I'm good. Then all of a sudden, something just happens. Shakes you up. Like bad. Not like the shake where you just kind of just knock it off. Like, oh, I didn't really feel that. Let me just go. Talking like a hard JJ Watt hit hurt. Just knock you out. And you're like, okay, yeah, I felt that one. I'm still down and feeling it. You're upset. Things happen. So I'm not the only one that has had or having hardships. It's okay, you can raise your hand. I'm gonna raise both my hands for everybody. Here's the thing: although there's many facets of hardships in our life, typically we react a certain way. What do you mean? We either overreact, <laughs> so it's happening. We just overreact. We just do crazy things. We try to create our own outcomes and try to get out of that situation. Again, we try to create. Or we let it just fall away. So you know it's not working, don't worry about it. Or we stop in disbelief. Like we get the shell shot, pat in the road. What's just happening? Then you breathe in and out. You pray. You talk to the Lord. Either out of anger, frustration, calmness, anxiety, nervousness, you still take time out to pray. Wherever you get. You don't have to be home, you can be driving, you can be at work. You can be in the bathroom. But you take time out to pray. You wave the Lord because you feel when you pray there's a connection, there's a relationship. And you wait for the answer. You wait for him to show up. Now, if you're doing number two, you guys are good. Talk to me afterwards. I need to find out what you're doing. Where it's that easy. We can get there. Some of us are probably already there. That's why it's good to talk about testimonies. It's good to talk about challenges. Here's another one. We criticize it. In other words, oh, it's my boss reason why they have it. I don't know I find myself doing that. The first thing, it was because of him. Like, I wouldn't have this problem if you would have made this decision. If you would have did this, this wouldn't happen. If my mom or dad would have did this, I wouldn't be having this problem. Why they just can't listen? The blame game. Exactly. Or you decide, I don't want to do the blame game. I may ignore it. I may ignore the situation. Like it doesn't exist. So I'm going to pretend like it doesn't happen. If I just don't talk about it, maybe it just disappears. Or you decide, you know what? I realize what this is, and I'm upset, and I'm going to take it out with somebody. I think my dad used to do this to me. Maybe stuff didn't go right at work, and he'd come home, and he's like fussing at me, taking it. I'm like, man, look what? I didn't do nothing. You're looking at me funny? No, I ain't doing nothing. What are you talking about? But that happens. You either take it out on someone, or you take it out on something. Frustration. You couldn't take it out on your boss, so you come over, you got to take it out on the kids. You can deal with the maintenance. You can't deal with your boss, but you can deal with the little we're going to take a look at something. 
Our interpretation, our interpretation of reality can cause us to miss the Lord's effectual working throughout the hardships in our lives. Again, our interpretation of reality. Now we're going to watch a short video to share some highlights of this. But this will direct us into the message this morning with Jesus speaking to 4,000 and Jesus speaking to 5,000. It's going to be a whole different take and a whole different outlook from the Lord. You're like, oh, it's a miracle. I knew about the miracle of Jesus feeding the 4,000 and Jesus feeding the 5,000. There's no different with our lives. It's either miracles or it's healing. Miracles is instantaneous. Healing is a process of time. Everything that we face is either going to be a miracle or it's either going to be a process of time. It's how we accept it, how we embrace the Lord, how we bring Christ in our life to deal with the situation. Not what we decide to overreact, create an outcome, get upset, take it out of people. We're going to look at this, our reality. But here's the deal. It wasn't just us. The disciples and the apostles did the same thing. Questioning Jesus. Well, Jesus, maybe we could do this. Now, they with the Lord, they were still questioning. So I say that to say we shouldn't feel bad about the situation that we face. Even our outcomes, how we have the situation. They were neck and neck walking with Jesus Christ. And they still, why? Because they were flesh. We're flesh. The difference is practice. Kind of what we talked about last week. They're practicing over and over again. We're going to touch. Watch this video. Short, not too long. Inspirational story. Carries eggs and calls. Maybe someone has heard about it. We'll see. Hope this plant does not look like it is. Hold on. <laughs> if not, I'm going to have to narrate this one. Hope I don't have to do that. But while we're waiting, if you can grab your books in front, Mark chapter 6, verse 30 through 44 is what we're going to read. And I may have to reset this. We'll see. I don't know if it's picking it up. Okay, there we go. Her grandmother explained that each of these objects had faced the same adversity 
boiling water. Each reacted differently. The carrots went in strong, hard, and unrelenting. However, after being subjected to the boiling water, it softened and became weak. The egg had been fragile. Its thin outer shell had protected its liquid interior, but after sitting through the boiling water, its inside became hardened. The brown coffee beans were unique, however. After they were in the boiling water, they had changed the water. Then she asked her granddaughter one final question. Which one will you choose? So what? So can someone tell me what happened again to the to the call? Say it again, man. Yeah, a little bit. Say it again, Quincy. Say it again. Say it again, Quincy. You said that perfectly. It, it changed the water. It ch it changed the water. So the coffee changed the water. What was the water like before it changed? Clear water. Boiling. Boiling, which was hot. Probably didn't feel good. But the coffee changed. Situation. Coffee change situation. Portion. Oh, where is he going? Let's read about feet of the 4,000 and 5,000. We're going to see just exactly what they mean by hardship. Again, we all have different hardships. Hardships could be something as simple as, because we've got different age groups. It could be something as simple as, I don't want to get up in the morning. Especially like Ava. That may be a hardship for Ava to just get out of the bed. It's still a hardship. It is. She was like, this is not easy. I want to just lay down. Something changes. I'm going to read it this morning. Mark 6, verse 30. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. Amen. Now, this is, this is Jesus feeding the 5,000. We're going to read and we're going to touch on that this morning. 31. Did it come up? To a desolate place. And rest a while. And many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. So Jesus was speaking to his apostles. So come away to a desolate place. Now, desolate, nothing there. Empty, emptiness. All of the emptiness. Jesus tells us, I want you to come away from where you had to come away to go to this empty place. Desolate. Next verse, which is 32. Departed into a desolate place by ship privately. So they departed. Say it again. Read it one more time. And they departed into a desolate place, desert place by ship privately. By ship privately. The same thing. This is the so you guys know you, your Bible in front of you is the, the King James version. This is the English Standard version. It's just basically about this, you know, this is the same. This is a little bit more easier on the the, the word. But the way we're going to group today is going to all tie in together. All time together. Good job. Next one's going to be verse 33. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. Many saw them. So people saw them leaving. So many saw them and recognized them, and they ran. They're on foot. All towns got ahead, got ahead of them. 34. Then Jesus placed the amount of salt on large people and blesses with compassion, Lord, them because they were ancient, not having any strength to turn, and had began to teach them great times for the people. So he had compassion on them. He felt this. He saw it. Now, there's Jesus and then there's Satan, or Jesus and the Antichrist. Now, if Jesus are able to recognize with us just as well as them to have compassion on us, you don't think Satan will recognize us either? You don't think he's going to be like, let me test them. And if I don't test them, let me test the ones that's around them that may have an influence on them. He ain't going to just sit. Come 
on, it's a game. You're not going to just let, let us win like that. He knows it's victory, but he's like, hey, look, I'm just going to try to take out a, a leg, a horn, hit you in the gut. I'm going to do something to let you know I'm here. It's not just going to be just some easy road just because you decide to say, hey, I'm a Christian. They move my way. No. What did he say? They were like sheep without a shepherd. Compassion. They're willing to learn. They're willing to be taught. They found something. 35. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the hour is now late. Now, this is his disciples telling Jesus. Now, I found this funny in itself. They're like, I don't think Jesus recognized that this is a desolate place. You don't think he recognized that the time was late. He was getting like, he was like, Hey, Jesus, uh, this. There ain't nothing wrong here. It's getting late. We got to go. I know you told us to come here, but it's getting late. Nothing wrong here. We got to go leave. Hmm. How many times we do that? That's what I said. We create that outcome. Like, God doesn't know that we in the midst of a hardship. Uh, God, I think, you know, I should do, or I, I think I'm going to do this, because this seems like a similar situation I've been through before, and I got out of the situation last time because I did X, Y, Z. The flesh, it happens. 36. Send them away to those who surround the countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. And then look at the instructions. Send them away. Go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. That's what he said. But look at 37. Read 37. So denarii is, in terms of U.S. dollars, was a Roman silver coin, and in terms of U.S. dollars, it's in, it's in between 20 and 28 bucks. So for easy math, let's just say $20, right? So they're saying, hey, you want us to take 200 denarii. So 200 times 20, 4,000, right? Pull into the account. I can take with it, man. Let's see. All right. 4000 So most of us here, me, $4,000 is a lot of money. Now, some of you may be like, oh, that's just chump change. Well, I'll tell you what. You give me that chump change any day, I love you even more. But then, damn, <laughs> exactly. For four grand. So the disciples say, hey, look, you want to take $4,000 to go feed these people? See, it probably wasn't the hardship. They had four grand. So he's like, hey, look, we can do this. We've been in this situation before, possibly. We can go take care of this, Jesus. We got this. We got four grand. We can go feed them. That's the difference. Did they stop and pause and say, Jesus, what should we do? For us, welcome in the Holy Spirit. Father, I'm, look, I know you see what's going on. But I need to welcome you in because I don't need to make a decision myself. I need you to direct me to the right decision or direct me in the path I should take. He didn't do this. Watch what happens. He gave an answer. What's 38? And he said to them, how many loaves do you have? They didn't, didn't even think about the money. They didn't care about the money. How many, bread, how many loaves of bread do you have? Go and see. And I would have been like, but Jesus, I just told you about, we got four grand. You, you didn't hear that? I, I, was, I got four thousand dollars. Keep your money. I want to show you that I am the real living God. I am the son of the real living God. Keep your money. Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, five and two fish. 39 million. Then he commanded them all to sit down in groups of three guys. Sit down. Now at that point, now he's in control. Same thing with our situation in life. First they said the money. But then they stepped back once Jesus spoke. And now he says, sit down. I'm going to show you a miracle. I'm going to heal you. That's how our lives do. I'm going to show you. You think you know it's okay, but you invite me in, I'm going to show you. 40. Anyone? So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties. I want people to sit down. 41. Two fish 
true. That's why I always I can read all the time. Anything that Jesus did, you could just just study it, and you could just—he just showed us example what to do. And this is the Son of God. He still has so much humility. He took it, and what did he do? He looked up to heaven for guidance. This is the Son of the Living God. He still had all this humility. He took the bread and two fish, blessed, looked up to heaven, and gave it to the disciples. Now, I'm sure, I could be wrong, if I am, I'm okay with being wrong in this aspect. I'm sure when he did this, just as the Holy Spirit speaks to all of us in here, I'm sure when he looked up to heaven and he blessed it, I'm sure God gave him instruction. Either before the blessing or after, or in the midst of it. How can you say that? Because he made another step. That's what God wants to know. He, I understand you in the hardship. Invite me in, invite the Holy Spirit in, keep a relationship with me. If you're hot-headed, don't try to sugarcoat it. Be hot-headed to me. Talk to me when you're upset. You can't fool me, I created you. You can't run from me, I created everything you see and everything that you cannot see in this world. We don't even talk about heaven, we talk about in this world. We can't get down to the bottom of the sea, all the way down to the bottom. Our heads explode. They can't make machinery to get all the way down there. So we don't know. So we can't run from the Lord. Can't hide. Can't hide from social media. You can't hide from creating another alias. Just tell them. He wait for the instructions. The instructions may be here. I just want you to stand still. Well, Lord, I really don't want to stand still. That'd be my first response. Let's just be honest with you. Lord, I really don't want to wait. Well, like, what do you mean? I'm like, you wait. Quite what you understand. Well, I get the waiting point. I just didn't really want to wait. I just want you to understand and say, I don't want to wait. Like, can I just do something? No, wait. Watch something happen. 42. And they all ate and were satisfied. You guys can say it together. And they all ate and were satisfied. 43. And he took up 12 baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. Look at this. Happy. Miracle. Now, when this happens, of course you got to write this down. Of course you got to tell testimony. How the Lord worked. We were just talked about that last night. God wants his glory, and I want to give it to him. When stuff like this happened, miracles, I was in a situation, I was scared, had hardship. Lord, what do I do? Eventually, you come out and say that. When you wise up, he sit there, he wait. He is time, so he waits on us. I thank him for that. 44, and those who ate the loaves were 5,000 men. 5,000. Ain't that a lot bigger than that? Two loaves. Yeah. No, it was five. It's five to a half. Two fish, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Correct. And they were all satisfied. They were all satisfied. Yeah. Because he spread it out. It's a miracle. So he just took those things. Wasn't the whole plethora. He didn't use the money either. That's why I made the reference to the denar. He didn't the denarius. I'm sorry. He didn't use the money. Yeah, I don't need that for a grain. Keep your money. I created it anyways. I don't, let me show you who I am. How much compassion I have for you. For all of us. In your situation. Think about it. We're in the hardship. He don't want to make it even much more hard. He said, we're in the hardship, so. I understand you can't pay your bills. So go get a credit card to get yourself out of the situation. Now, I'm not going to put anybody on, 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 on blast, but I'll put myself on blast. That was me. I made that decision. No, it wasn't recently. My wife looked at me we had this conversation the other day. It's like, you know what? I thought I was making the best decision. We were struggling. Like, oh, well, you know what? I got a credit card. I, mean, I never once bought in God. I didn't bring it Jesus, let alone that I invite the Holy Spirit in. I'm good. My credit score good. I got the credit card. We good. Let's not so worry about it. Let me max that up. Then the credit card get maxed out. Uh oh. Now I can't pay the credit card bill. Dang, you back in the same situation I was before. Only thing happened is I just kind of delayed time. And I kind of thought I felt good along the process. So then I ignored it. Maybe to go away. Maybe the Lord will send me a blessing in the mail. I get a four thousand dollar check in the mail to kind of help me out. Right? Okay. You're gonna learn the hard way, Lance. You will learn, but you're gonna learn the hard way. 
and I had to learn to quarrel with. I had to invite Christ in my life. I had to invite God in the situation. Can he sit me in the right Was it easy? No. That's the first thing I tell him. When he tell you and he send the right people, I'm like, oh, God, that's my friend. If he has some friends, I'm telling you not. It's going to be some more work that you're going to have to do. What Jesus did. Jesus, although he knew what was going to happen, he still went up and he blessed, looked up to him. It's work. God's not going to let us down, but it's going to require us to do some work. Some more work. Why? Not to make us feel bad. A lot of times it's for tests. We're talking about the, hey, you want to test us. How much do you trust me? How much do you love me? How much do you know how much compassion I have for you? He wants to tell the story to reach somebody else. Somebody else will be in the same situation if not similar. To touch him. Now we read, we touched on this 5,000. Now we're going to see the 4,000. He'd be like, you would think you would see after one hardship, they saw this miracle, things would be a little easier. But again, we are flesh. Things don't happen. Challenges ahead. Eyes and thoughts fixed on Jesus. So I was like, I like it. Challenges ahead. Thoughts fixed on Jesus. Can we all say it this morning? We should say, challenges ahead. Thoughts fixed on Jesus. Beautiful. Beautiful. Challenges ahead. Nothing else we get today. Challenges ahead. And I'm not saying, oh, challenges may be ahead. At some point in my life, challenges will be ahead. As challenges arise, my thoughts are fixed on Christ. We're going to wrap up with Mark 8. We're going to read Mark chapter 8, 1 through 9. It's going to talk about Jesus feeding the 4,000. It's talking about Jesus feeding the 5,000. I'm going to see some more miracles. Jesus feeding the 4,000 men. In those days, I could have someone else to read. I'll read. Anyone else want to read that or mark it? In those days, when again a great crowd he gathered, and they had nothing to eat, he called his disciples to him and said to them, Have compassion on the crowd, because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. <laughs> three days. What stood out to me, he had compassion. How did he know? How did he know to have compassion? Because we linked to him. For two, three days, he couldn't pick. Maybe it took them three days to get humility. Who knows? Nevertheless, they were stayed with Jesus for three days. He got touched. Kind of like what we talked about last week, when a lady who had the hemorrhage problem for 12 years, you guys remember that? And she touched Jesus, and Jesus said, you were healed before you even touched me because your faith was intact, you were strong. Same thing here. They were there three days, waiting on something. Kind of like me. I guess they had the credit card situation over and over again. Like, all right, this didn't work. So I just, Lord, I'm just going to sit here and wait. You told me to wait. I didn't argue with you before. I didn't learn. I want to learn this time. Please have compassion on me. Either through crying, either through on my knees crying, I'm driving crying. Whatever it is, I got broken down. I thank God, too, this morning and every day for being broken down because now I know better. When you know better, you do better. And you share it. You share it with other people. I'm not hiding. I'm no perfect person. The guys tell you that all the time. You'll hear a whole lot of stories. I'm like, gosh, man, you did that? Yeah, I did that. So I'm being embarrassed about what you did. He washed it away. We serve an amazing God. An amazing God. Three, verse three. And if I send them away hungry to their home, they will faint on the way. And some of them have come from far away. Wow. Now he's taking Jesus' tell him, all right, I'm not going to send them because they do already know. They're hungry. They need something. They need nourishment. Same thing with us. Now this is natural for you to talk about, but we're talking about spiritual health, spiritual food too. A lot of times, but God knows that we can't go too much further. I had one guy on the radio the other day, he said um, something about, he said, man, you know, God is always on time, but I mean, can somebody tell him that his time seems to be a little different than our time? I mean, it, it, comes, it, it comes, and it's like, man, it's like right at the last second. Like, you know, can you come like maybe an hour or two, three hours before that time? And it's the truth, but it's the truth. You're like, man, I, Lord, I thank you, but gosh, it, got, it was close. I'm just saying it was a close one. 
He has time, and he shows us that. He's not going to fail us. He's not going to fail us. Four. And his disciples answered him, how can one feed these people with bread here in this desolated place? Desolated place again. Kind of like you said. Like, what? I'm sure they had the same reaction. You're like, what do you mean? Two fish? What? Are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. Let me show you. Five. He asked them, how many loaves do you have? And I like it because now it's showing that, okay, there's a communication, it's a relationship. He asked the question, how many of us in here, I don't want to put anybody on the spot. If you don't mind being put on the spot, you can raise your hand. Uh, you know, in a similar situation, I know I have, I know I can't be the only one there. How many of us have ever got instructions with a situation from the Holy Spirit in my home? In other words, you either pray about something, you either act something that's very frustration on the con, and either at that moment or later, in your heart, was real. It's like, no, I need you to go do, you need to go down the street just knock on the door. You have? Anyone else? Thank you, sir. Okay, two young men in the back. All right, three. All right. All right, another one. Okay, I'm going to make sure I'm going to pray. That's good. So when you felt that, did you immediately go do what was on your heart? Or were you kind of a little nervous and say, uh, are you sure? No, you were all in. Oh, no. You weren't all in. I wanted to take care of myself. Exactly. Anybody else different? I'm a little skeptic. You was a little skeptic. Yeah, I'm hoping I'm not feeling crazy. Because I'm all, anyone else didn't think different. Because I was the same way, no, 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 I want to take care of this myself. You're not fast enough. I mean, I didn't come out and say that directly to God, but my actions were saying it indirectly. Like, hey, look, you're not fast enough. Let me take care of this myself. No, I said wait. You said wait? Well, he told me to do something. I said, no, wait. Oh. And I waited. And you waited. And then, yeah, and I didn't have to do it. And it came to pass. He took care of it. That's another, that's another point. He uses other people. Now, his spirit is in all of us. So he may tell one to do something that links to the other to make it all come full circle. Now, I'm just sharing this because, hey, we just got to reflect. It's always talking about, this for church is another purpose. It's come to reflect, talk about situations, testimonies, to read in the Bible, to tie it all together, make it personal, to get strength, to pray. And the rest is in his is in his control. And he asked them, how many loaves do you have? They said seven. Six. And he directed the crowd to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves, and having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples and said before the people. And they set them before the crowd. Look at it. We just saw it take place. What did Richard say? And then what did Angel say? What did happen? It was two directions. One was with the disciples. Then what did he do? He directed them to the crowd. See how, see how it works? You can't make this stuff up. We just saw it. just took place for you read it. He directed the disciples. Then he directed the crowd. He came full circle. Sit down. <laughs> Seven. So now he's communicating, telling them, he's teaching. So although he was teaching all those people, he was teaching the ones that were with him to his disciples too. This is what should take place. They had a few small fish, and having blessed them, he has said, these also should be set before them. The ones that you bless. Now what we read earlier, what, what, what did Jesus do? He blessed and he looked up. Looked up to heaven and he blessed them. Right? What we see that took place there? The blessing. So all of the hardships change in our life. There's a commonality of what we should do. Stop, pray, wait for the blessing, wait for the instruction. Either through us or through somebody else. Be patient, have compassion, continue to communicate. Whether it's calm communication or whether you're upset and you're yelling at God. You got, we have to be sincere. That's how we reach them through our heart. Be sincere. If your heart is 
try to be as much greater than you yelling right now, if it's going to reach him and it's sincere, do it. Trust me, he'll show up and you'll be crying and say, Lord, I'm, I'm sorry. I've done it many times. But it worked. I preached it. The point is we have to reach him. Whatever it takes. I'm going to go throw stuff at your kids and throw stuff at your husband and your wife or your friends and your family. Say, I'm, I'm trying to reach God, so just stay clear. I'm just throwing stuff. I'm upset. No, I'm not that upset. Not that upset. Be cool. Verse 8. And they ate and were satisfied, and they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full. They ate and were satisfied. Yeah, when I read that, I paused that. I was like, they were satisfied. I'm like, well, how is it? And I'm thinking about hardships. How is it that, like, right after you get out of hardship, you satisfied? And what's funny is it's kind of like sales. You sell stuff and you're like, oh, you're on this high. Like, oh, but then you just, the more you realize, you start selling it. Well, you know what? I can't get too high because I, I got to sell something else again. Like, you just don't sell one thing and that's it. I have to sell something else to keep it going. Same thing with the hardship. Challenge your head. They're going to keep coming. Like, oh, man, what am I doing? Continue to do what you did that got you out of that situation. Wait on the Lord. Wait for his instructions. Continue to communicate. Well, I don't know how to communicate with the Lord. Do you have, do you have any friends? Do you have any friends? Family? Do you have anybody that has a pulse that can talk back to you? Try communicating with them all the time. When you're upset, just be transparent. When you're good, when you're doing wrong, whatever, communicate. Then practice that alone in the secret place with the Lord. Just talk out to him. Oh, I do that. We'll continue to do it. Well, why do you say continue to do it? Because challenges will continue to come. So you don't want to stop talking to the Lord with your relationship and challenges that are coming, and then you just, we're going steady and steady and steady for To grow closer with him, hip and hip. So we walk in together in the challenge. Last verse. There were about 4,000 people in the second one. Look at that. There were about 4,000 people, and he sent them away. Four thousand. Hmm. Five thousand and then four thousand. I look at all that situation in our lives. Now whether or not we face it something now or later, we're gonna get through it. We get through it with Christ, with God, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity. I have this prayer that I saw, and we're gonna wrap up today's message. I saw this on online and I said, you know what? I want to I think it'd be good for us. It says family prayer, but I looked at it as an individual prayer. I'm like, you know, I could use this myself. I've used it for me, and I also could use it for my family too as well. And you guys are family. He was online, family too as well. So the same thing, so I think we should actually share, but it's a prayer. And if you guys want to, I know sometimes you guys write these down, some of you take pictures. If you want to take a picture of this later, you can. But the prayer is, Heavenly Father, we lift up every family. May you bless them abundantly. May you look upon them with favor. Provide them in all need and bring peace to their hearts. We pray that prayer becomes their daily bread. May praise and worship be embedded in their lives as they gather in your name. May your spirits enfold them and keep them protected from all evil. Temptation and sweet deception. Father, we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Again, this is a prayer that I'm not, it, it touched me when I saw it, and so we should. I was in, I was led to, to put it up here to share. So again, if you guys want this, I can send it out. If you want to take pictures of it, you can too as well. Today's message was it long? Once again, the day. Not just the day, but Tomorrow, throughout the week. We have prayer requests that's behind the scenes too as well. We can, we can fill out our prayer requests as well as our donations. But the, before we get there, does anyone have any any questions, any any comments for the lesson today? No? Yeah? You enjoyed it? Yeah. I did too. I learned something today too as well. I, I think if you keep your faith and you know that there's a God that's looking at you and loves you, go ask his prayers. Amen. It might not be in your 
time period, but he will answer your prayers. No testimony. No testimony. I love it. I love it. And that's what we have to, that's what we have to do. Share those testimonies. And we were talking about that last night. Just last night talking about some he, on the ball. Every time he, 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 he comes here, it's, it's Every time we come in, we talk about good things, things to, to sharpen our blade. So peace, grace, and blessings to all of us.